everybody. Hello, Jean-Jacques Trochon. You've just, pub just published a book called Flying Against the Odds. And this book tells about the very special flight or trip you did since the moment where you were diagnosed cancer 70 years ago. And since then you have found a way, maybe several ways to stabilize your situation and you let, let a lot of people profit from your extraordinary experience. So who are you, Jean-Jacques? Hello, Francoise. Uh, very nice to uh, have this chat with you. Um, yeah, I was born 59 years ago from a father who was a pilot already, and my mom was uh, a stewardess. So it's it's actually a very funny exactly. story. <laughs> yeah. And um, yeah, and so um, we, you know, I, I've got um, a couple of beautiful children, uh, a very, you know, very, very uh, nice and, and helping wife. And uh, um, so uh, we're, uh, we're a team together and um, um, we've, um, we've actually uh, got a long way uh, uh, flying the planes, um, uh, going on trips uh, with my wife and my kids and, uh, and then, you know, life uh, ends there, um, uh, the, the, the flying life ends there and um, yeah, I jump on the horse to uh, uh, now helping people around the world. Exactly. And uh, the extraordinary story about uh, your illness and the way you dealt with it is uh, very well described in your book. I think you wrote it also to help other people with it. But could you just give us a little sum up or summary of, of this, the situation since the moment where you got the first uh, diagnosis? Um, look, it's, it's uh, make the story short. Um, uh, I've had uh, uh, kidney cancer with a seven centimeter tumor um, in 2003. Uh, was, uh, I had uh, urgent uh, surgery. And then uh, from there, um, I was some say lucky uh, to be sort of stable for nine years until it got, uh, uh, we've got uh, metastasis uh, growing all over the lungs. Uh, which uh, required uh, other surgeries, um, five to name them. And um, uh, I've always pushed back the treatments, um, not refuse them, of course, but pushed them back. And uh, until the body actually stopped uh, being sick. And uh, so that's where I am today. Maybe you can just tell us uh, how you reacted to the first diagnosis when you heard you had it. Uh, what was proposed to you and what did you do? Um, the, the very first one, the very first diagnosis, it wasn't a diagnosis actually, because, um, um, you know, the kidney in 2003, I'm talking about, um, um, it, it, you know, I basically had, um, you know, urine in my blood, uh, as I describe it in a book. Uh, I mean, you, you mean blood in your urine? Well, it's actually urine in my blood. Okay. Uh, because it was actually very sharp red uh, when uh, I had to do I know, a week like, like everybody else. Um, and uh, so I was operated within you know, 36 hours urgently. They took the kidney out, the tumor out. And um, yeah, until about nine years later, where it got, um, it, it got totally uh, you know, freaked out. The situation was, was, was uh, freaked out. And, uh, um, I, we, we started counting uh, metastases everywhere uh, in both lungs. So you during the nine years where you seem to be free of cancer, did you do something special? Did you change your lifestyle? You, you were a pilot and you went on with uh, business as usual, flying passengers all over the world. Yeah, um, you know, it, I... I, I, the day actually, the day after I was operated, um, I actually looked at my, uh, my, my surgeon who came around around eight o'clock in the morning and I, and I looked in his eyes and I thought he wasn't going to, you know, sort me out. He wasn't going to heal me. Uh, so I immediately thought, well, I've got to do something and um, to help myself as well, you know? And so uh, I stopped the sugar completely and, um, and then I, I started reading uh, the first uh, info that we had on anti-angiogenesis, 
which was the very, very first, um, you know, first info that, that was uh, produced uh, by some of the, the scientists. Um, and since then, you know, a lot went on. So, so you um, stopped the sugar yeah. and you tried to eat more of the, uh, well, the foods who help to impeach the um, blood to come until the, um, uh, the tumor. So this is the angiogenesis that happens when a tumor needs to grow. It builds up new vessels, bringing nutrition and uh, uh, building blocks to the tumor. And there are some uh, foods, stuff that help to um, stop this process. Is that what you, you did? And maybe which are this type of food which is anti-angiogenic? Yeah, absolutely. Um, those are the very, I mean, now I would, I would um, you know, uh, say, I would talk about a lot of them because we have the information. But early on, uh, they started talking about, uh, you know, the red fruit, uh, the berries, um, you know, um, because of, um, of their uh, uh, properties uh, that showed uh, a lot of response uh, in lab, you know, at least, because that's what we had only. But then you had to trust something. You know, if you want to do something on your own, you, you've got to start trusting something. And uh, so those are the cruciferous uh, uh, foods as well that they also started talking about, you know, like 20 years back. And, um, and then cut all the, the sugars, cut all, cut all the bread. How was know, it possible in the, in the plain? You get normally these um, not very dietetic or nutritional, uh, nutritionally right food in the plain. How did you do as a pilot? Uh yeah, at that time, I, uh, I, I had to do, um, you know, I had to obviously eat uh, and, and I wasn't aware of what, uh, what fasting in particular could bring now and what uh, uh, the ketogenic approach would actually bring as well. So I, I had to do with, and it, it might just be why uh, cancer came back afterwards. But then, you know, we have no proof, but that's, um, you yeah. know. Uh, you you talk about the ketogenic approach and maybe we will... Uh, talk again about it in some minutes when you talk, when you explain to us how you came to this uh, new um, knowledge. So you got a relapse and I suppose it was also a, emotionally extremely difficult to, to live with that situation. Um, what was the proposition? You said your kidney had, uh, the kidney was uh, um, removed, but it has made metastasis in, in, during the nine years and now you are confronted with a metastatic situation which is of course still a, mo a worse prognosis what was the uh, the option the therapeutical option you had and what did you do um you know first of all i was extremely extremely lucky um you know thinking looking back you know at it um from two fronts uh the first one is that i had a i had a, a wife uh, whom I discovered, you know, uh, the human side of her was absolutely incredible. You know, I, I didn't know a human being could give as much. And, and I, I myself, looking back, don't know if I would have been able to cope with everything that she actually coped with. So that was uh, a real, you know, uh, a game uh, a breaker for me. And then the second one was uh, to be directed to a, a, a cancer specialist, you know, oncologist called Bernard Escudier, who, who happened to be uh, the chairman of ESMA, the European Society of Medical Oncology. Um, so I was extremely lucky because, you know, often uh, the, the most well-known top people would be directed to him. And he, there I am, you know. So what did he, what, what were the alternatives? They said, okay, now we are going to do what with you? Yeah, so, so we spoke very briefly the first time and, and I said immediately, okay, well, what's the, what's the situation? And, you know, I, I said, what about chemotherapy? Because, you know, that's what the word was. And right away he said, no, no, it doesn't work for you. That's not going to be, okay. So we will, you know, probably use uh, one of the two that we have on the market, the anti-angiogenic therapy or immunotherapy. Uh, but immunotherapy 
uh, now, as we know, is, is going you know, quite fast in terms of research. And it looked at as, as we, uh, we were going to, to, to go for the uh, anti-androgenic therapy to start with. And that was a problem. Yeah. Uh. Yeah, that was a problem because that's why I explained to him right away, which actually took me where I am today. Because if I started the treatment, as we know today, the anti, an anti-angiogenic therapy is for life. Today, we don't have a choice. That's how it is. And so knowing uh, starting an anti-angiogenic therapy would have ended my career, my pilot, pilot career immediately. Okay. And, and, and so what did you choose? What was the process. alternative they proposed to you? That is it. That was it. And, and it's me saying, look, you know, I, 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 can't, I can't give up my job now. It's like it, unthinkable. And um, so we would discuss some more. And uh, he said, look, we, we can try. We can try um, uh, uh, holding back a bit by, by, uh, by you know, going for surgery. Okay. And we'll call, we'll call the surgeon and we'll talk about it, see if it's possible. Okay. And so you decided you prefer to uh, have this option of surgery. Yeah. We went for surgery immediately saying, you know, let's, let's see what it, you know, what, what, how we end up. And, um, and, and as, as, uh, as it turned out, you know, four and a half months after I was back in a cockpit. Okay. But you go too quick. What uh, did you prepare yourself to this surgery? What did you do? Because you, you seldom have an appointment on the next day for surgery. Yeah, well, I was very lucky because uh, Bernard Scudier is one of the top. Then he knew uh, another, the surgeon, uh, Pierre Magdanella, who's uh, one of the top uh, uh, thoracic uh, surgeon in France. And it went very quickly. They, they managed to get a gap real quick and, you know. But you prepared yourself? You didn't prepare yourself to this uh, surgery? No, no time. I, I didn't have time. It, it just came came okay. about. That was 2011, 2012. And okay. so it just came, boom, straight away. Okay. So they took away a part of the lung or? Yeah, uh, everything uh, that could be seen uh, in the lung was the mid lobe uh, on the right side, which is a little bit less uh, uh, volume. Uh, it has a little bit less volume than the, the upper one and the lower one. So he decided to go for a thoracoscopy and um, took the midlobe out altogether okay. because everything was in there. Okay, and you say that uh, as a surfer, you are a hobby surfer, very almost professional, but you like that very much. It was for you the most difficult thing was to show your scar on the beach. Yeah, it's, it, this is something that, you know, from uh, the first operation in 2003, I remember saying, coming up with something. I don't know how it came about, but uh, uh, I remember on the operation table, um, just before I was, I was sent to sleep, um, I, I, I grabbed the, the doctor's arm and I said, look, make it look like a, a shark attack. You know, I don't want to <laughs> look like, a, you know, so <laughs> At least I wanted to have something okay. to talk about, you know. <laughs> <laughs> That's not the advice that the surgeons get every day, I suppose. So no, you wanted no, to do something special. No, no, you had a good laugh, and, and we're still talking about it because, um, you know, we we um, we still, uh, you know, speak to each other once in a while. So um, it, it shows that you can, even in the most anxiogenic situations, you keep your humor. This is probably also one of the ingredients of your stabilization and yeah, uh, I think, yeah i mean you know I'm, I'm not qualified to talk about this but uh surely you know well it shows that that you know patients uh you know sick people who have uh, a way to have a, a performance morale uh seem to last longer than the ones who just exactly. you know drop it so mm -hmm. and and so you you had this operation mid lab was removed and so you were in the cockpit after five months and you thought probably this is now that this is it now yeah yeah exactly i uh, i thought you know this is it i'm i'm back on the horse and uh, nothing going you know is, is going to stop me now and and um so you know i went on for a while 
until we found on one of the checks, uh, the regular checks that uh, one has to do, uh, you know, after being diagnosed of such a thing, um, found that now we had metastasis in both lungs, which Bernard Scudier was expecting, basically. Okay. And now what, what happened? I think that, that's a new step in your uh, yeah. understanding of the disease. Yes, I, I had started uh, um, uh, following and, and studying in all the biology books and, and you know, researchers' books, uh, um, you know, whatever was available as well on, on the net, um, on, on, ketogenic, on ketogenesis, basically, and the fasting process. And um, yeah, I, 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 I also saw uh, this uh, famous film uh, filmed by Thierry de l'Estrade and Sylvie Gilmont. And, and, and uh, you actually, the, the clinic was, uh, your clinic was, uh, yes. yeah, yes. well, yeah. So, so that really triggered something. And, uh, and, and of course, the last 20 minutes or so, uh, I talk about Walter Longo and, and, and new, uh, uh, new uh, ways of, of uh, trying things. Uh, with uh, a famous clinician, uh, Australian clinician, who became a, a very good friend of mine as well, David Quinn, who was medical director at Norris. Um, and yeah, they started those uh, clinical trials actually on the uh, floor of the hospital. And that, that just um, gave to me uh, the way to go, basically. So uh, the film called uh, Fasting and New Therapy, with a question mark, was a film done by these two uh, journalists, Sylvie Guillemot and Thierry de l'Estrade. And they filmed in the Antarctic, the penguins, they filmed in our clinic yes. where, um, uh, let's say, medically uh, supervised fasting, they filmed in uh, La Charité in Berlin, and then they finished at uh, Walter Longo's lab in South California, in Los Angeles, where he showed that uh, fast, uh, letting uh, mice fast before and short of the uh, chemotherapy would protect them from side effects. And you you called them. Did you call Walter Longo? Did you call David Queen? And, and how did you, because I suppose there you, you didn't have much time either. What happened? Yeah, um, I I got on to, uh, I, I just sent a message to Walter and then I sent another one and then somehow he, he responded and I said, I offered, look, you know, if you have a little bit of time, this is my situation. And, um, you know, I'd like to have a chat because I'm prepared to do something I've never done before and I'm going to do it all the way. And so he said, well, let's chat on, on Skype at the time, you know, Skype existed and um, already and it wasn't too bad. So we had a 25 minute chat and he explained to me the process and what the day by day would look like and um, he recommended you, know, you to to do a water fast if i remember yeah, that. Uh, yeah absolutely um uh, you know so he, he was very clear in the process and what to look for and what to be care careful of and he recommended that uh, you know i would go uh, if i went uh, over sort of five days that i went uh, to see my my gp so that that i could be sort of checked out you know to um, to do it the right way, and um, basically that's what I've done. And I went how many for a days day did you fast? fast? I I went for a twelve day fast immediately. Twelve immediately. So this is something maybe you we just can a little bit um, talk about because for me I imagine a person having a third recidive or a third bad diagnosis must be really desperate or in a certain at least extremely uh, stressed. And you call someone who tell you stop eating during 12 days uh, and you do it straight on. So for me, this is a very characteristic of your, of your personality. How, how do you explain? Where, where did you take that confidence from? Well, look, you know, I can't, I can't deny I was stressed. Anybody would be stressed in that situation. But, you know, and, and I was scared, you know, inside. But I was totally focused and, and, and I realized, look, this is it. You know, this is either you or me. Mm -hmm. I'm talking to, the, to, to death, basically, or the cancer itself. It's you or me. So I'm going to, you know, slam you, batter you until, you know, there's nobody else. There, there's nothing left of you or me. Mm -hmm. So 
So I just did it without, you know, focus and no turning back. And I started without even, you know, thinking of anything negative about it. And your wonderful wife, that was she worried? Did she tell you, um, well, it was like, what are you doing there? You know, no, 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 no. She, she, she already lived um, the 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 situation where you know we came out of the hospital and she was at the hospital every day when I when they took the midlobe out on the thoracoscopy uh, a year before, and she saw in what kind of a situation I was and that now it was worth. And she just agreed with everything I, I started to do. And she witnessed uh, the conversations I had with the scientists, with Arthur Longo. Um, and she was just ready to help me day by day, day after day from the moment I started this whole thing. Wonderful, really. And uh, yeah. so Neta, what was the result when you came to the operation? Did he... Well, That, that, that was, I mean, to me, that was something to record because that was quite funny, actually. And, and, and the surgeon was great as well. Um, I had, you know, like on the 13th uh, day, I, I went um, to back to Chantilly. We were living, um, we were at the uh, Institut Gustave Roussy. So um, I went back to Chantilly and, and, um, and um, uh, um, um, did a, a scan, a scan with a, a friend. Uh, who had been taking care of me um, uh, since 2003, uh, a radiologist. And uh, he, he said uh, to me, well, you know, just after the scan, come and check it out, you know, let, just see that above my shoulder. So I was, you know, right away, I was uh, on top of his shoulder and it, he was showing me, look, this one, I mean, this got to be calcified or, or you know, th those, those cells are dead. And... Uh, And then the other ones, you know, they didn't seem to be, um, they haven't grown or anything. And that was three months after. Uh, so you mean after after the fasting? You, yeah. You, yeah, you... so after the fasting, we you know, I had this uh, just before the first operation, three days before the first operation, the double thoracotomy. Yes. Um, I, I did the scan. And we found this with my friend, radiologist. And then in the afternoon, I had an appointment with my surgeon with the file just to check it out so he could see for himself three days before he was operating on me. So you had a regression of the, of the tumor and some of them were calcified, you said. Five of them. Yeah. Five, Five of them were calcified. So it's a spectacular impact of these 12 fasting days on an evolution yeah. would seem to be unstoppable. Could you? Yeah, and, and you know, when I remember, I recall being uh, in the office with the surgeon and, and he looked and he was, he was most amazed and, and he said, yeah, what's happened? You know, is there anything? And I said, well, you know, on top of that, you look good. You know, it doesn't seem like I'm going to be uh, operating you. You don't look sick at all. Is there, you know? And I said, well, today is the 13th day. I'm not eating anything. What do you mean, like a little bit of, no, 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 nothing, just water. Are you still, are we, are we, are we able to live still after 12 days of non-eating? So, so he was laughing about it, but he was most amazed because he, he didn't know anything about it. So, uh, but then he witnessed the results, you know? You know? Okay. Yeah. Well, and then you, you overcame this operation with not too much difficulties? Yeah, um, look, you know, the operation was a little bit tough, uh, obviously, because they take the lung out of you completely, um, you know, clean it up, put it back in. And, uh, and then you got to, you know, we had to take a train back uh, down to Biarritz, where we live in the south of France. Um, so that was a little bit of, you know, and well, then, of course, they, get, they gave me a lot of medication, which, um, which really, you know, hurt me. And uh, so um, I, I, you know, did what I could, you know, and then uh, before the second operation, uh, I, I decided to do a 17 day fast. When you uh, own again. Yeah, exactly. Um, and so, um, you know, before the second operation, three months later for the other line, 
uh, which will, you know, repeat it, the same thoracotomy that we have done on the right side the first time. And um, so then after the operation, the second operation, um, you know, everybody was expecting more of those uh, metastases and uh, nothing happened. Okay. So that's the moment where you had practically stopped the process. Can we, yeah. with the help of the surgery, of course, but uh, on your own, it's like if the, uh, the, the engine was just out of function. Débrayer yes, le I'm... moteur, Zach, uh, a French. Yes, I, I, I remember the, the sense that uh, Dr. Bernard Scudier used, you know, it's uh, if we operated, if we operate on you, uh, you said in French, because it, it talks a lot, it says, uh, it's, it's reculer pour mieux sauter, okay. which, which means um, they're going to operate on you. Okay, it's going to give us a little bit of time, but, you know, say if you have a metastasis somewhere in the lung, we take it out, and if we do, so, if we do nothing, then three months later, you're going to have three of them yeah. around the same area. So it was said in a negative way. It was said, okay, we just gain a little bit of time but we cannot reverse the process and no. apparently uh, addition the addition of this surgery plus your own fasting experience um, made uh, stopped actually the process uh, since that moment did you have any operation any further operation or any treatment after this one since then, yes. uh, about a year ago, uh, there was um, four other uh, tiny nodules which yeah. didn't seem to grow or grow much. They were pretty stable. So we had a dilemma. We, we decided to we either do something or not. And um, um, we decided, look, it's, um, it's maybe the occasion to go for a crea, cryotherapy um, because uh, at Institut Gustave Roussy, uh, they have the doctor who started it, you know, in France many years ago. So he's the best. And um, and so we decided to do it. You know, that was like, a, you know, walk in, walk out operation. Um, okay. okay, so, so but except of this one, uh, now since um, about eight, seven, eight years, you're just controlling the situation with your lifestyle, if I understood well. And, Absolutely. And this uh, is what you describe yeah. in your book and I think will interest so many people. And now you have to tell us a little bit, describe a little bit your day. Uh, uh, if I understood and we maybe we take the time to explain that you do a, a, a type of a nutrition which is limit in the calories so you're not restricted but you, you, you never overeat first of all. Then you make... Uh, you. Uh, do the intermittent fasting you leave long intervals without f taking any food in the day and periodically you repeat four or five days of fasting and your type of uh, nutrition is ketogenic and you you told the, the word many times ketogenic meaning that you really cut the sugars and the carbohydrates which can be also uh, starches uh, cereals and that uh, sort of thing and you eat mainly vegetables, legumes, uh, cold press oils, uh, good fats. Maybe just tell us how does a, a day of yours look like and your wife? Yeah, it's repetitive. Um, you know, early morning, uh, I can have green tea. I have hot water to start with, a bit of lemon in it, you know. Um, uh, and then I might have a cup of coffee uh, later during the morning. And then uh, we have like a, a brunch and a brunch that, uh, as, as you said, uh, you know, we, we have um, we have a very limited calories, um, but uh, very limited um, amount of carbs as well. No sugar. And we use, uh, for example, always salad, um, uh, some tomatoes, uh, cooked tomatoes, always uh, with uh, mushrooms and um Olives, uh, you know, a little bit of hard cheese. Uh, we can have a little bit of feta, um, you know. Um, yeah, so so avocado as well, please. avocado. Yeah. Do you take legumes, pulses? Um, no, no, we don't. we um, we 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 
we only stick to the same thing over and over again. And, okay. um, and, then, and then I will finish by uh, a little bowl of uh, uh, red uh, berries, basically uh, red blackberries. Um, the ones that are, you know, really recognized for uh, their uh, anti-angiogenic uh, response. Uh, but then also they're the fruit uh, that have the less carbs, basically, of all fruits. So, so, so it's like a mix of the two, um, which is super interesting. And you, do you take some fish sometimes? Yes, I, okay. I take fish, you know, sardines, uh, mackerel. Um, okay. Uh, yeah, that sort of fish, and we have uh, Pacific uh, salmon as well. We yes. can have a, we have we can have Pacific salmon uh, in the evening, for example, like a little steak of Pacific salmon with uh, with uh, grilled uh, uh, veggies and uh, the veggies that don't have much carbs as well. Okay, and do you, do you have a lot of uh, good fats like cold pressed oils? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Always. Um, and, and the thing I forgot to say is that I have a, a, a tablespoon of uh, olive oil uh, in the morning when I get up, basically, and, and another one before I, just before I go to bed on an empty stomach. Okay. And um, this is something you do because your wife, I think, is a very good cook and maybe yourself too after a while. No, I'm, I, I can't say I'm a good cook. No, I, I, my wife is a wonderful cook. She... Uh, this is this is really what what I, I I'm trying to teach people and and um, tell people uh, about um, about uh, facing uh, as such an illness. Uh, you know, you're you're the patient basically, but um, uh, you've got a family structure uh, around you, and and they're absolutely absolutely um, indispensable. Uh, yeah, indispensable, um, and they have to be looked after because. You know, often uh, what you see is that the person helping the person who is ill, who's sick, um, is in 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 uh, in more trouble than the person who's sick itself. Uh, yeah, you so, you describe in your book that sometimes she had to hide to have a normal meal uh, or to take a little piece of something which is not part of your diet. Yeah, that's 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 what she she tries to do because she wants to she doesn't want to you know try to disturb me but I, I tell her that it's no problem at all because when I uh, when I do things when I when I fast and and she eats uh, to me it's no problem I know why I'm doing it and um, like I said it's like almost a military um, uh, uh, procedure that comes back and then on and on and on I and suppose so, your discipline as a pilot has yeah. helped you to have this incredible um, self-discipline. Yeah, it's, I'm sure it's part of it. Uh, discipline is, 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 you know, really what, um, what makes you succeed in, in, in a lot of ways um, uh, in, in, uh, in our world. Yes. Um, how do you do when you go out? Because I suppose sometimes you are invited or even for well, talk. Or yeah, no, look, uh, um, it's, um, it's, it's always the same story, you know, uh, we don't go out a lot, uh, but when we do, uh, usually all my friends know, uh, all our friends know, and if they don't, you know, ask the question first, which they almost always do, I will call before, and I'll say, look, I, you know, I have this little problem, um, so they're always very very helpful because you know it's easy to then put your yourself in the in the person's position so it's easy to you know cook a meal that you may be not used to and um you do a little bit of a something or or they they do they they cook something but then they make sure that they i have this and that and that you know which i don't touch the rest of course i understand so easy. so that's the advantage when you are open about uh, the illnesses we have is that at least you can freely explain to your friends and there is probably nobody who wouldn't understand that. Thank you for this, uh, for this explanation. But I, since like many, many of your fans, I follow your Facebook um, page and I read the book, of course, and you, you tell uh, that um, 
you take also some um, days um, fasting every month and uh, it reminds me that uh, in our fasting clinic which has been founded by Dr. Otto Buchinger uh, well um, um, 70 something years ago he used to fast until the age of 84 one week every first week of the month so it's interesting that you probably on your own discovered this this uh, technique or this uh, rhythm in your in your year that uh, you fast regularly one week absolutely uh, it's monthly and uh, and and i started it and um, i'm sure it's 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 helped to actually stabilize the whole thing yeah. um and uh, i was amazed to learn a while back that Otto Buchinger was actually doing the same thing mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and uh, so um that that gave me uh answers you know when you do that sort of thing you do it but you don't have proof uh and and you know hearing this news is to me it's like a, a such a such comfort uh to to know that a doctor who was as sick as he was um uh, uh used the same technique and went on until you know late in his in his life uh, being able to do that sort of thing and stayed in good health yes and this this uh, proves also that when you start dealing with your own regeneration uh, strength your own self-healing power, we, we get very innovative, creative, because I, I suppose you are very in touch with your body language. You, after all these years of, uh, of fighting and um, working together and against your own body, you developed a sort of very, very fine uh, sense of what is good for you. Yeah, you know, you, you learn, you really learn to listen to your body and to be attentive uh, every day uh, to what's happening, you know, with your body and what uh, you would, uh, you, you are trying to achieve and what is around you that could bring something positive and others that could bring something negative. And you try so, to avoid, of course, the negativity. Probably yeah, also it's, in the it's, people. It's a, it's a routine. It's a yeah. routine. And I can imagine, like when you were driving uh, or piloting Boeing seven 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 or Airbus three hundred eighty. I heard uh, you need, of course, to have controls. Do you control uh, parameters in your body, like the ketosis or um, other? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I, I check my my pH, uh, uh, my urine pH always. I check my ketosis level um, just to stay uh, within uh, some sort of limits. Um, and and I, I'm not a, a diehard ketogenic uh, a, a, a person, but, uh, you know, it's somewhere between the low carb and the keto, but also taking into account the anti-angiogenesis. Yes. Um, the response of each molecule that, that exists in a few different foods. Uh, and, um, and then uh, for uh, the last couple of uh, years, a year and a half maybe, uh, I'm also now very attentive to the microbiome uh, because you know, I've had the chance also to um, meet with uh, Dr. Laurent Zidvogel, who's uh, probably, maybe if she's not number one in the world, she's uh, not very far from it uh, being requested everywhere in the world, whether it's Asia or the US or Canada, um, everybody wants her. And, and she got the, 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 what, the, the medal, the famous medal, Légion d'honneur, uh, late uh, 2018. She's uh, a specialist in microbiome. Eh? Yes, microbiome. And uh, um, Dr. William Lee, uh, who's um, you know one of the person I, I, I work with. Who and he's, excuse me, a... just for our people who are listening to us, this is the, um, the leader of the anti-angiogenesis uh, labs, and uh, he writes books about that. And I suppose, Jean-Jacques, that even if in your book you don't give all your menus, but the people who would be interested in reading your book and wanting to know more about this special diet you put together and seems to help you so well, uh, where can, can we get information about it, more precise information? 
Yeah. Um, uh, you know, my, my book is, um, my book is, um, is a memoir, uh, you know, from a, a time, a period of time in my life where uh, I give a, 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 a flight plan, basically, uh, to people to uh, have a, a way to start uh, what you call a DIY, uh, do-it-yourself uh, way of, of doing things, looking after oneself uh, between two uh, 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 doctor's appointments. Uh, there's a lot to do and there's a lot we can do. And now, um, you know, it's, it's, you can't even say it, it works or it doesn't work. Or, you know, we have so many proof uh, of, of, uh, of, of concept by a simple uh, blood test. Uh, and, and you're taking part of it. You, you even, uh, and this is your very special entrepreneur um, characteristic, you um, flight with your air company um, several uh, very uh, renowned scientists in the field of fasting and um, nutritional strategies to the center of Gustave Roussy, which is of course the uh, cancer center number one in, the, in France and probably in, in Europe. Europe. Um, yeah. And you, on your own, you took the, the, the hotels, the, the flights, so you organized everything and you made the first symposium on a very, very high level, who seems to have given a lot of new perspective to the oncologist and of course to the patients. And um, uh, we see, of course, that you are a, a personality which is never going to give up. I know that the second symposium is not uh, developing the way you want it at the beginning, but you're not uh, going to uh, let it uh, be. And I think you are part of a new paradigm in medicine. And the interesting thing is that probably the, the fact that you are a pilot uh, flying uh, these big buildings with uh, hundreds of people inside, uh, let the, even the medical people uh, be impressed um, also through the fight and through the enthusiasm you have and uh, uh, the continuity in your efforts. So I'm very, very pleased you brought that book out. I think it's going to help a lot of people and I sure, I'm sure you're not going to stay at that point. You probably will uh, help still more with uh, more advice in your pages uh, so that this uh, book, Flying Against the Odds, is going to be probably a book that every person, uh, <laughs> every person is going to have on his uh, night table because even if we are not personally uh, concerned about uh, cancer, someone in our family will be and or is. So I thank you very, very much for this interview. And maybe before we, we've finished, um, I would like just to give you the word and maybe tell us what is the, let's say what this disease brought to you, because we see sometimes People uh, at the beginning, when you get ill, you think it's all negative. And when you look back, sometimes you think, well, since that moment, there was a breakthrough in my life. Can you say something like this? Yeah. Um, you know, uh, the this, this sense of um, why do you want to fight? Why do you want to live? Um, those are questions that, that, you know, when you're very sick, uh, you're 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 asking yourself those type of questions, um, and um, I see today in our world, in our medical world, and um, Dr. Bernard Scudier, who again, you know, is a, is a leader in cancer research and, and cancer therapies, um, is the first one who's you know just willing to say that uh, our our, um, uh, our medicine today is you know do not have, does not have all the answers. And uh, he's particularly um, interested to see what happens next. And he's looking for response as well, you know, in, in the, the world uh, or the domain that, that we're actually trying to expand. And, you know, to me, um, there's nothing more beautiful than uh, give someone uh, a real hope, uh, not a hope that, you know, which is hopeless. Um, 
uh, something that uh, uh, a guide, basically uh, a, a, a flight plan uh, to um, to actually uh, being able to use um, and and uh, not only for him but for the entire family around to structure the whole morale and um, something to uh, look for every day uh, to be able to do so that people stop worrying and uh, at the same time uh, focus, uh, stay focused on what they have to do to get better on top of their, uh, their, uh, their treatments. That's the whole will and, um, and, and you know, what, what I want to do uh, for the rest of my life, basically. That's why I wrote this book. Um, this will give uh, guidelines, basically, uh, to people. And, you know, they'll be able to chat to me uh, eventually later on, you know, for sure. That's it. So may, I think uh, this is the best word to finish. Um, it helps you to be active to your own yeah. healing and help medicine. Because sometimes yeah. the doctors are happy when they have someone who is, but someone who is not doing nonsense, but having sort of guidelines which are based on science and on the experience on, uh, of people like you. Thank you very, very much, Jean-Jacques. And uh, my pleasure. we Thank recommend you. your book to anyone. And I look forward uh, that this book is a big success and that you go on giving us uh, the best advice. Bye bye. Thanks very much. Uh, Francoise, I want to say that um, your work, the work that uh, the clinic pushing is now doing, is absolutely fundamental as well. Uh, we're looking forward to all the publications that you are coming out with which is unique in this world because no one else has done it before except the Russians, but you know, we don't have access to what the Russians did and it's some time ago. So, you know, we're, you know, we're just so looking forward to have all these publications and, and, and that's gonna be some answers, you know, that, um, or response basically uh, rather to um, the clinicians basically, uh, because a lot of them are waiting for some guidelines and those are gonna, come from these type of work that you are coming out with, with uh, Professor uh, Andreas Michelson. Thank you very much. And let's work uh, hand in hand. All the best. Absolutely. Thank Bye. you. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Francoise.